I've got this hypothesis about part of why we are seeing a lot of issues in our culture nowadays is because every generation is like a tsunami wave that brings all of their problems that started in their childhood. Mm. Who is being parents right now? Who are being parents now already of like teenagers? The same people that were caught in the explosion of divorces. We are seeing now two generations after that and those generations come 20, 30 years later with a tsunami of their own problems. And it it does feel to me like we are carrying it into the future, more and more baggage. I, I think you're exactly right. And that's what we see in the data too. Um, we see skyrocketing rates of cohabitation because you've got young people that say, marriage is dangerous. Marriage is risky. I learned from my parents' marriage that anyone can leave me at any moment for any reason, and I'll never see it coming. And for men, they look at marriage and say, and that woman can take away half my income and all of my children, and I will be bound to that, you know, custody contract until my kids are 18. And so in the minds of a lot of people that grew up in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, marriage looks dangerous. Marriage looks risky. Cohabitation, on the other hand, hey, that's very low risk. But when you actually look at the numbers, cohabitation is bad for everybody. You know, you're poorer, you break up more often, and it's definitely worse for the kids. You're likely to have a child born into that cohabiting union. Those kids are four times more likely to live in poverty, four times more likely to suffer abuse, sexual abuse or physical abuse. They are three times more likely to suffer um, from their own substance abuse and addiction issues. They're more likely to be obese. I mean, like cohabitation looks safe, but in reality, it's bad for everybody. But you've got this, I think what you're saying is exactly right. You've got a damaged generation, a generation that learned that marriage can hurt you instead of understanding the reality is that is that someone who has not given their entire life to you in front of your family and friends with a, a symmetrical commitment where you're both giving all of yourself to one another forever. If you don't have that, you're so much more likely to be hurt in every way that a person can be hurt. But you're right. We're bringing in those childhood wounds. And a lot of that has to do with you know, it, it points to the drastically following falling marriage and parenthood rates because we've just learned there's too much pain in family. Unfortunately, that means that because we're not getting married, because we're not having children, and if we are, we're doing it outside of these protected bonds, that is actually where you're seeing these skyrocketing rates of loneliness, meaninglessness, and despair. There is another interesting statistic, I'm going to butcher it, but the likelihood that you will split up even if you will get married after cohabitation is higher if you have lived together before yeah. the, mar the, the, the actual marriage and then perhaps starting a family. Um, so I think that, that that idea of trialing your partner has been also debunked in science but for some reason, like the marriage, for example, the case for marriage in, te in terms of the science, I don't think we've ever had data saying that marriage is actually bad. So why are we still seeing all of these changes and policies literally falling over each other? giving us more and more flexibility to make marriage even more disposable than it already is. Well, again, I think it goes back to that immediate adult gratification that marriage does impose constraints on you. It imposes constraints on your behavior, on your choices, on your energy. And I think that in our modern day culture, we have equated um, constraints with oppression. Um, and so we want to be free of all oppression. And that means being free of all constraints, all commitments, all, and, and really what that means is bonds. You want to be free of any obligations to your parents, to your children, to a spouse. And you can do that. And like you said, that's a recipe for some very short-term, very fleeting happiness. But it is a disaster when it comes to long-term 
um, fulfillment, long-term meaning, long-term connection. Um, and a lot of these things, they sound really good in your 20s and your 30s. Once you get to be 40, 50, especially as a woman, and you haven't gotten married and you don't have children, and maybe you're caring for your aging parents and you're thinking, there's nobody that will care for me. Nobody. Sometimes you realize too late that the world has lied to you about the importance of forming and prioritizing these critical familial bonds 